Entendemos que OSHA es una eh, dependencia de gobierno. We understand that OSHA is under the government. De, es una entidad responsable de hacer las inspecciones. Uh, es una entidad responsable de ver que eh, que todo esté bien en un lugar de trabajo. It's the entity that's responsible for doing inspections and making sure that everything's okay in the workplace. Uh, consideramos como trabajadores que OSHA no es tan fuerte. We understand as workers that OSHA is not that strong. Porque depende de, de, de decisiones o, o posiciones de políticos. Because it depends on politi politi the politics, politicians. O sea, no tiene autonomía. It's not autonomous. And I'm glad you raised the question, Gail, because I think that um, we, I forgot, that we really want to ask the public to bueno, support OSHA. Qué bueno que ha de respondido. Pre ha hecho esa pregunta porque eh, siempre preguntamos, le decimos a la gente que apoyen a OSHA. Because they're very much underfunded. There's just really not enough. And there's a, there's a, even I, I mean, <laughs> even I, I just like you know, there's this. We've, there's been a real slurred campaign against OSHA. It's a bad thing, you know. So we really need to like all read books. Of, like the jungle really moved me when I was young. You know, just the factories back then, and we've come a long way. And there's still people living in the same you know work, working conditions. So, so okay, 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 do we do it? So okay, okay, we need to change our mentality about OSHA because no ser contra OSHA porque OSHA es una cosa buena que debemos leer y educarnos que está muy bueno. Did you have a second question? Yeah, but other people might want to ask. I'll come back. I can. Oh, can I just say something? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're totally correct. Um, even OSHA themselves say, "Oh, there's this myth that we just come in and do." But that's the myth that the business wants us to believe, because it is all businesses as a matter of principle. They don't want regulation. They don't. I mean, they're always fighting against that, right? So any way that they can um, further their agenda to get any regulation outside of, uh, to apply to their business, they're gonna go for it. In farming in particular, it's, uh, there's like Carly said, there's this manipulation of the family farm, the small farm, farm farming is as American as apple pie, so you don't want to do anything that is going to put them uh, in danger. So, but the reality is OSHA, especially in farms, their standards and regulations are very, very updated. They told us I mean, this much for other industries, this little for farms, for uh, agriculture. And at least now we're learning so that has to change, but we gotta start somewhere. And in this case, a lot, a lot of people, the industry in this state is learning that OSHA does apply to a lot of them. And the ones that they don't, we gotta change that because there's, like Jose says, it doesn't matter if it's one worker uh, or 10 or 20. They are all also exposed to dangers in, those, in the workplace. Estamos diciendo que en los, la, cualquier industria, cualquier negocio no quiere que haya regulación no quieren que nadie se meta con ellos a decirles qué hacer en su lugar de negocio sobre todo si les va a costar entonces si eh, y eso es un principio de todo negocio, especialmente en este país, los negocios se asocian y todo para defenderse de cualquier regulación pero esto es tan importante para la seguridad del trabajador y En este caso también hay que decir que OSHA ni siquiera es tan poderoso, sobre todo en los ranchos, porque las, los estándares que aplican a, a, los, a los ranchos son así de chiquititos, son bien poquitos y no, y no han sido eh, regulados por mucho tiempo o no han sido cambiados, no han sido actualizados. Los que aplican a muchas otras industrias son así de un montón de regulaciones y de estándares, pero para ranchos son bien poquitos. Entonces, ni siquiera OSHA es tan fuerte eh, en los negocios, en, en los lugares de trabajo en general, siempre está bajo ataque y, y, y luego en los ranchos mucho menos porque no han sido actualizados los estándares. Next 
have a couple. Uh, first of all, who were the seven uh, representatives that signed the letter mm -hmm. um, no, no, for those who aren't in the field? And we saw it at the who were the representatives that signed the letter? Right, the seven the were in the LEP or Right, okay. Well we have this is <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> Let's see. Reed, Maloney, Gibson, uh, Hannah, someone else from Hannah, Maffei, up to five. Oh, Collins, there we go. They said yes. They signed no. against the LEP. So this is on the representative contra no, this is on the so we're just missing one. One more from Hudson Valley, near, near um, Gibson's okay. district. But you have a list. We have a and list. So and nobody signed. A, you know, no one did the equivalent in favor of. No. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Ella mencionó quiénes fueron los seis. Nos falta uno, pero tenemos una carta donde están todos los que han estado organizándose en contra del programa de énfasis local. Is there a? Do you have a letter of? Support drafted that, for instance, a delegation could take to uh, Louise Slaughter. Yeah, we have it right in the back. It's like an organizational support letter. So I think some of the organizations from Rochester have actually signed on. We expanded it since the February version, and so um, we're always just we're always looking for folks to sign up. But it's basically support of the campaign. But we are asking if you can form a delegation and right. you themselves group take it, that's more powerful than just putting the name. Okay. Um, and yeah. we, we need to bring awareness to them because they, most of them, all they hear is from the Farm Bureau and their interests. Mm -hmm. And they paint a very, uh, a totally different picture from what we're seeing. And they are talking about the, the very weak uh, industry. I mean, we heard this from a, from a, one of those politicians. I mean, he said, this is what they're saying to me. And then we had to educate him and what we're seeing and actually bring workers for them to speak to him directly. And these workers took uh, a lot, of, it took a lot of courage for them to speak um, to, uh, it was Dan Maffei. And, and we brought up a good delegation of not only uh, community members, but also workers, and they spoke up. And so if you do the same here, that's gonna help us enormously, because that's what OSHA needs, so that when these politicians are putting pressure, they can also say, well, there are a lot of people who are asking for this. And it's not just that uh, what they're accusing us of, that we just need to put fines and we need money for the federal government. It's in response. I'm willing to put together. Okay, yo le digo que es muy importante que, que por favor, si van a apoyar, que no solamente pongan su nombre en una carta, sino que hagan una delegación de gente, ¿verdad? Y que vayan con los políticos y se presenten. Porque esa es la manera como demostramos que hay gente que le importa. Que le importa tanto que, puede, que van a ir ahí, van a tomar de su tiempo y van a decir, a mí me preocupa la salud de los trabajadores, la salud de la gente que está produciendo esta leche para mi familia, para mis hijos, ¿verdad? En la comunidad. Entonces, que por favor nos ayude con, una, con un grupo a ir con los políticos. Muy importante. We're going to start doing simultaneous translation now, um, and then we'll do it consecutive in English. So I saw Colin and then Nancy. So uh, it's it's sort of it's my understanding of this sort of stuff that like the ultimate answer is an organization of workers capable of like threatening continued production and profit. Um, does this does this campaign begin the sort of first steps toward that? So with the, the ultimate goal is what again? Say that part. Right? A, a, a worker organization capable of you know, threatening product production and profit. Amenazar producción y ganancias. Es una pregunta muy interesante. No hemos medido. It's an interesting question. We haven't measured. Uh, 
llegar hasta ese punto. So es, how to get to that point. es por eso que hemos empezado estas pláticas. That's why we've started these talks. Para buscar el apoyo de ustedes. Look for your support. Como ciudadanos o representantes de como gobernantes. As citizens, as representatives of government. Porque yo aprendí que a través del diálogo sure. se puede lograr mucho. Because I've learned that uh, through dialogues we can learn a lot. Y, eh, y creo que cuando usted dice poder este bloquear la producción. I think that when you're talking about blocking production. Yo pensaría como un último recurso y espero no llegar hasta ahí. I think of that as a last resource and I hope we'd never have to go there. Oh. I mean, there's, I mean, with dairy, there's dairy is year round, uh, and so, and also the cow will die if it's not milked, and I think that that's something that has potential for organizing. Um, but we're yet. I think everything Jose said reflects what I would say. Well, I would, yeah. I would uh, say if I didn't believe that we can do that, I wouldn't be standing here. That's what we want to do. But we got well, We don't have the resources yet. But we have done. We started organizing to get access to what is there and to test what are the limits in that. We know that it's very limited. But um, so the organizing has meant to have access to the law. Now I believe, and we see this. We're talking with workers. They themselves say, "If I don't might milk this cow." in one milking or the employer is in trouble, right? So that, that I think might be is, is something that needs to be done at some point and we are talking with more and more workers to realize for them the power that they have, but it's very, very difficult. Uh, and actually there's a campaign for years and years to get rid of the exclusions in the overtime pay, the off and collective bargaining. And I think the reason why it, uh, at this, it has been a legislative campaign. The campaign has been mostly to change from the politicians' uh, perspective to change, to get their votes. But I think it hasn't gone that far because precisely we're not, the workers have so much power. Um, but like I said, because of all the issues with retaliation, with immigration status, with being outside of their communities, being isolated, it's very, very difficult. Not impossible, but it's just the dream, right? That you will be, that they'll be organized with leader, leaders like Jose and many others that we have met and that they have the support of a community to be able to do that. And we have an example in, in, Mo, in Mokali, right? That is where they put pressure in companies um, that are buying the products, and that's another matter too. Nancy, then John. Solamente quería felicitar a José por el trabajo. En mi casa, en mi familia, todos somos ciudadanos americanos. Yo soy chilena pero he vivido muchos años en este país y estoy haciendo una campaña entre mis amigos y mi familia para mandarle cartas a los políticos. Así es que estamos con su causa. Yo especialmente trabajo con gente del campo y sé lo que pasa, lo veo todos los días, todas las injusticias, no solamente en las lecherías, también en otros ranchos. Así es que yo me uno a la causa y solamente quería felicitarlo porque es bueno tener gente como usted que lo representa. Uh, muchas gracias por sus palabras. Eh, esas palabras me motivan a seguir adelante. Eh, como un chile. Oh, well, I wanted to say that I'm with his cause and trying to support whatever he's been doing at this moment. Uh, I have a family. I came here an American citizen. All my families are American citizens. So I already told my families and friends and people that I know because I do have uh, all over the years many people in the community that I know. So we're trying to support this idea. 
-hmm. and this cause because I have seen every day what farm worker had to face. I work with them every day, so I'm really sympathize with the cause, and I think they're doing a wonderful job. So thank you. Cómo no. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias eh, por ese apoyo, por esas palabras. Thank you for that support, for those words. Y eh, esas palabras son las que nos inyectan energía. Those are the words that inject energy in us. Y nos hacen perder el miedo. And that make us lose our fear. Porque como trabajadores, and as workers, tenemos, tenemos miedo we're, we're scared. a perder el trabajo, a ser deportado. To lose our, lose our job and get deported. And I think you say, I'm sorry to interrupt, disculpe que lo interrumpa, pero le quiero decir algo a esta gente. I think if everybody could do something, and that in this cause, it would really, really, I would help, because I have seen all the things that these people have to go through. And, um, and I hope to continue with this campaign. Thank you. Gracias. Sí. Uh, con el apoyo de nuestras familias, With the support of our families, de nuestras esposas, from our wives, y el apoyo de ustedes, and, uh, the support of you all, esto nos impulsa a seguir that, luchando. That supports us to keep going to fight. Yo espero luchar hasta el final I hope to fight till the end. y cosechar and to also harvest. Los, harvest. Thank you. los frutos. ¿Qué esperamos? Harvest the fruits. Muchas gracias. gracias. Es cierto, es una estrategia. Sure, that is, that's true. That is a strategy. Eh, la hemos visto en Sudamérica. We've seen it in South America. En Centroamérica y México. Central America, Mexico. Eh, yo respondía, esperamos no llegar a eso. I would respond, I hope we don't have to get to that. Yeah. Eso esperamos. That's what we hope for. Pero si esa necesidad se diera. But if that need was necessary, tendríamos que acudir a esa opción. We'd have to acudir. Acudir, no. pedir. Okay, we have to that, take that action. ¿Qué es lo que nosotros no queremos? That's what we don't want. Eh, tenemos políticos inteligentes. We have smart politicians. Right. Tenemos <laughs> tecnología. We have technology. <laughs> Muchas cosas que pueden beneficiar y favorecer para poder eh, favor so entendernos, en, que ellos nos entiendan so y concientizarlos hacia nuestras necesidades. Okay, go ahead. Um, say, if most people thought about their family histories, it's not a lot different. You know, my family came here from Europe and um, you know some came here uh, through legal channels some came here um, and were undocumented but um, you know they had to fight for rights and, and fair wages and eight hour work day and all that stuff so um, I can I can understand where you're coming from and I appreciate your struggle uh, one of the things I was wondering about is how is ICE and being undocumented being used as a way of trying to keep farm workers where they are and not to be able to um, organize or to um, get their rights and their um, issues out there? Uh. Migración nos ha mantenido en el silencio. Migración nos ha mantenido en el silencio. Uh, immigration has maintained us in silence. 
porque pienso que defiende intereses políticos y económicos de este país. Alguien dijo, ¿cuánto tienes, cuánto vales? Los trabajadores no tenemos nada, no valemos nada. Y lamentablemente nosotros vivimos eh, vivimos encajonados que así es y que así es and unfortunately we live boxed yeah that's right okay good boxed in and that this is how it is this is how it is pero personas como estas organizaciones que nos han apoyado nos han educado but these organizations have supported us and educated us a, con a conocer leyes y a saber que también nos protegen to understand what the laws are and how those laws could protect us. Eso nos ayuda para poder denunciar o para poder eh, hablar sobre las injusticias en los centros de trabajo. That helps us to denounce and speak out about the things that are happening in our workplace. Yo ya perdí el miedo. I'm, no, I'm not scared of it. Soy indocumentado. I've lost my fear and I'm undocumented. Mm -hmm. Y si por una causa noble, por luchar por mis derechos, por luchar por los derechos de los trabajadores, yo soy deportado. And for a noble cause to fight for my rights, to fight for uh, workers' rights, I'm deported. No me importa. I don't care. Pero estoy luchando por una causa justa. I'm fighting for a just cause. Que es defender los derechos. Which is to defend the rights. De los compañeros trabajadores y el mío propio. Of my co-workers and my rights. I wanted to, uh, to ask about uh, I mean, what I feel is much needed legislation in New York State, the farm worker fair labor uh, practices legislation that's been, uh, that has come up and has been defeated a number of times. Uh, if we succeed in getting that legislation in New York State, how will that uh, connect with the issues that we have been talking about tonight in terms of, uh, of people who are uh, working on farms and in the dairy industry and who may be undocumented or may be here as guest workers, etc., etc. Um, can you give us a status update on that? Act update. Right, and the also year. how that, uh, I mean, if that were to be enacted, how would that change the picture that we're talking about here in specific terms? I think I'm going to repeat a little bit about what Rebecca spoke to with that. She was speaking a little bit about that, that um, it's a little contentious, but we really feel like we want to build a bigger movement of workers and that that might be what it takes to get that law passed. That it really has been a lot of allies and, and actually sort of with grass tops at this point. I think maybe there were moments, it's been fought for for so long, there are moments that it was maybe had more workers championing it, but it didn't happen you know, what it took. Um, and I think we're at a lull right now in worker participation fighting for it. So we're trying to build that movement to support that um, now. And I think if that were to happen, then you can enforce it because workers are going to be right at the front line waiting for their overtime check, right? And their uh, right to, to collectively bargain and all of those things. But because so few workers even know about the proposal, how are we ever going to enforce it? It's similar with the bathrooms in the field, which is the one or two, the water and the bathrooms we've won. And then what was the other piece that we won? The, the children's, the child labor piece we won, right? The ch minimum, oh right, minimum wage, right? Because we weren't even eligible for minimum wage. <laughs> we won the bathroom in the field because of the consumer side. Consumers, you know, had nothing to do with farm workers. Um, but, uh, those are the little pieces that have been won, 
And um, those are very hard to enforce. They're almost, almost, yeah, very often not enforced. And if they are, it's just not working out even when it is for details around the bathroom piece. But um, so we have, I mean, we got to keep going to Albany, but we got to do much more than just go to Albany once a year and get active right around this time of the year. It's going to take sustained participation and sustained education of the people who will be directly affected as well as supporters. Does that answer your question? Can I get yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, please, please, yes. I'm sorry. Um, I just want to add a few more things on what all these people oh, oh. are saying. Let me just, we, we did. Oh. And it, this is Liberado Paz, who they <laughs> presented uh, earlier, but who's been really championing the Former Prefer Labor Practices Act, won a really prestigious award, a human rights award from the Kennedy Center. And I've known Liberada for many, many years, and part of my education was visiting her family in this crazy rural mountain in Oaxaca, and whenever I tell Oaxacan, Mexican Oaxacans that I was there, they just freak out, like, what do you mean, you've been where? <laughs> you know, so, anyway, it was because of the generosity of her amazing family that um, I was able to visit there, and so, yes, I'm so glad you came up with that, please say something about it. Well, just to finish up, I'll add just a few little things, I don't want to take the time that much, but um, I want to add a little bit about immigration issues that you asked a uh, question about, and also add yeah, maybe a few more about what you said. Uh, also, I mean, how uh, I find people. I mean, we had two weaknesses, three weaknesses here too. Like, I mean, he actually is uh, in Batavia follow up who's, uh, who's appointment. But how they been stopped, it's, uh, I mean, a lot of the times the police has an excuse and just stop you because I saw a Hispanic face or a worker's face, uh, like their face, and they automatically stop them by having an excuse and, and asking about the green card instead of a license. So uh, that's part of having very, very discriminatory around, around the places where they work. And so, and a lot of other things have been, um, I remember a few years ago that I was following uh, the daycare buses. I mean, just so many so, so a lot of issues going on. More of the police uh, stopping the people and then call immigration. Any accidents they see around, instead of helping the people, they call immigration. So it's, it's just anyhow, anywhere that they wanted to report these people and deport them, that's what they do. They don't care about either they got hurt, or they don't care about, I mean, what, what can they do for you? Instead, they call immigration. And so it's been really hard. And then also talking about um, how this law can protect the workers. Uh, this law can protect the workers by, for example, I mean, all the abuses that they've been talking about, for example, the OSHA and any kind of abuse will really protect their right by speaking out. Like I am uh, protected by speaking out, complaining, and I've been protected not to be able to be fired. So that's going to be a huge thing that can really protect workers. Like any complaining that they might have, and they have that right, and they cannot be fired. Because all of these workers have fear of speaking up about anything that's going on around. Uh, like for example, and a lot of things that happen uh, of not like getting paid well enough, or, or like what he says, you know, a, a lot of people really, really work yes, 80 hours per week and getting like 300 to 400 per week, and it's just a lot. Not long ago, I I used to translate to one of the dairy farms. Not long ago, um, this uh, labor department came in and found out that they, they were paying a worker like 400. Uh, per, per week, no matter what they're doing. And it's not even a minimum wage. You know, working so many hours is not minimum wage. And also, there was another lady who uh, actually I visited a while ago, uh, and then she asked me right now, this person, she asked me, Do you know what's the minimum wage? Because this farmer is paying me um, $7.25 or $7.50. $7.25, the last. Uh, so uh, the wage was last year, and they are not raising too much. I mean, it's just so ridiculous, you know. But I told her, you know, please call in and, and report that. But the problem is that we're talking about fears. They're so afraid of speaking up. When my husband works too, there are eight to eight workers who comes in, 
And then also, we know that the farmer should cover all the way the transportation from the home all the way to get to the places where they're working here. This farmer only pay from the border to the work here, and they ignore everything from the border that way home, which is not right. That's also another violation. But they are, compl I mean, they are so afraid. I talked to one of them and said, you know, please go and report it. But there's a lot of more education that we really have to do and encourage them to be like Jose. And that's what we want, but they're so afraid of because, I mean, they don't want to lose the job. They don't want to, like what they described about, like, I mean, I, I, if I lose the job, where am I going to go? You know, if you're a contractor, you might not come back next year. So there's a lot of this going on. So just to finish up, I really, really encourage you to participate in any how you can, in any way you can. We have a bus that's going on on Monday to support these bills of rights. So if you can come in with us, please let us know. I mean, there's a number in here uh, that you can call and, and ask for your seat if you don't want to drive. And please pick up a flyer over there uh, with all these women and so did an amazing job. So I really, really I want to thank them for doing all this job because, I mean, everybody should really, you really, really um, go around and, and, you know, thank them and encourage them to keep on doing this work because it's not easy. I did this last year and it was not easy to have a baby on the side and driving all the way home. Also, five or seven days and it's not easy. So I really thank you for doing this job. Thank you. And do you want me to translate it in English for you? Yeah, sure. No problem. Eh, la, la gente que trabaja en el campo, los trabajadores del campo, ellos creen que solamente ellos son explotados. So the people who work in the countryside, they think maybe they're the only ones uh, exploited. Pero eso, eso en general, la gente que trabaja en la ciudad es, la, es hasta peor. But the people who work in the city, it's worse. Que tienen un permiso para trabajar who have even permission to work. Eh, yo firmé hace como cinco años un, en una compañía de mantenimiento de I, limpieza. I came, vine, sí, vine. Sí, sí. I came to work in a cleaning company. Eh, el, me dijeron que me explicaron que iba a trabajar como alrededor de 30 horas semanal. They, they said I was going to work around 30 hours a week. Uh -huh. El día de pago era el viernes. The day of pay was, uh, oh, payday was Friday. Cuando fue el día de pago ellos eh, me dieron el, el y el cheque el viernes a las después de las 6 p.m. They gave me my check after 6 p.m. Ya es, es una ya ellos están rompiendo el, el contrato. They were breaking their contract. Eh, cuando el, el, el pago te lo tienen que hacer el viernes antes del viernes. The payday should have been before Friday. Uno no puede cobrar, eh, cobrar el día siguiente no lo puede cobrar el día antes. Oh, you can't charge it before. Ya cuando lo hace el, el recibe el cheque si tiene que hacer un pago el día viernes y esta tarde porque el cheque no lo pudo cobrar so I couldn't cash temprano mm -hmm. y ellos la comunidad está rompiendo el contrato and that's why they were breaking their, the contract cuando hay un día festivo and un día there's feriado, a holiday ellos un día anterior trabajan un menu, me, me, eh, menos de la, de la, del horario tres horas and then yeah. the day before you'd work three hours less than no, the schedule. Ellos dicen, Te vamos a pagar la and we're just going to pay you the hours you worked. Eso es otro. Uno de, que ellos rompen el contrato. Entonces uno está perdiendo. So we're not, we're losing. Okay. Yes. Son los trabajadores del campo, ellos creen que solamente ellos están exportando. So that's why farm workers think that they're the only ones being exploited. Y yo digo, eh, es, les los recuerdo los compañeros los, los trabajadores de campo hispanos que ellos mismos se discriminan al momento cuando vienen aquí al país and the farm workers they discriminate against them, against each other les preguntan eh, ¿cuánto hay cuántos se vienen a América? entonces ellos digo, les, eh, les dicen a ellos cuando hay, hay una una manifestación they say when there's a, a protest Dicen, lárgate este país, lárgate para tu país, porque esto es América. Ellos al momento ellos tienen que hacer, ellos tienen que defenderse, no dejar su intimidad. They need to defend themselves, they shouldn't be shy. Uh, sí, eh, 
Voy a responder a su pregunta. I'm going to respond to your question. Eh, no es cierto que solo nosotros los trabajadores del campo eh, sufrimos discriminación, it, sufrimos eh, mala paga. It's not true that only we farm workers suffer discrimination or low pay. Nosotros sabemos que esto es genérico para todos los trabajadores. We know this is uh, genetic for all workers. No, si nosotros hemos encaminado esta, este proyecto If we've put forward this project, y ha sido eh, enfocado hacia las lecherías and it's been focusing on dairies, es porque las lecherías están totalmente desprotegidas de la ley. It's because dairies are completely unprotected by the law. Sabemos que otras industrias tienen leyes. We know that other industries have laws. Sabemos también que no son cumplidas esas leyes. We know that these laws are always enforced. Entonces, or carried out. Yo como trabajador de lechería, And as a dairy farm worker, invito a todos los trabajadores I invite all workers a que se sumen a este esfuerzo. To come to this effort. Que se sumen a este proyecto. To come to this project. Y denunciemos atropellos como lo que usted está diciendo en este momento. And we'll denounce those challenges that you're talking about. Los invito a todos. I invite everybody. Ahorita, eh, nosotros somos un bebé. Right now we're a baby. Y comenzamos a dar pasos. We're starting to take baby steps. Pero si se suman los demás sectores, But la, other sectors come to la construcción, them. limpieza, restaurantes, construction, cleaning, restaurants, a este proyecto, Vamos a dar pasos agigantados. This project will take huge, giant steps. Personas como usted, como, como like ellos, you, like them, como la comunidad, like the como organizaciones, como iglesia. Organizations and churches. A esas personas son las que nosotros necesitamos para que se sumen a este esfuerzo. To come to this Yo dije a un principio que gritaba ayuda, ayuda, ayuda. I said at the beginning, help, help, help. Y no excluí a nadie. And I didn't exclude anybody. Yo soy del concepto de que sumar, sumar. I'm of the concept of add, add. Podemos alcanzar nuestros logros. We can achieve our successes.